Hello and welcome to CERN from 100 meters below ground inside the Large Hadron Collider Tunnel. This is the largest and most powerful scientific instrument in the world. With me here today, Mirko Poyer, one Hi, of, a member of the LHC operations. So Mirko, I just said 27 kilometers we are inside this incredible tunnel. It's a unique opportunity. But where exactly are we? Yes, uh, we are uh, actually in one, uh, close to one of the four experiments of the LHC. Uh, one of the points, well, one of the four points where the beams, which are normally circulating uh, parallel one to, uh, with respect to the, to the other in the, in the, in the two beam pipes, uh, they are actually in the, in the experiment crossing, and there we have the head-on collisions between the particles. So not far from here? Just not far from here. Yes, uh, in front of us there is, uh, there is uh, the Alice experiment, uh, one of these, uh, these points, and behind us you can see uh, we are in a straight section of the LHC, but you see on the, in the background uh, you see the, the curvature of the tunnel where we start uh, one of the arcs that bring us to point one where there is another big experiment, Atlas. So this is not a perfectly circular machine, you say it this is, is a straight section? You are right, it is not. Uh, instead, the uh, 27 kilometers of ring are not a circular ring, but we have several straight sections, in particular where we have the experiments, because there we want just to send the particles as straight as possible, as cold, uh, cold, um, uh, small as possible cl in, uh, into the experiments where they actually collide one beam against the other. Well, we are here, we see some of the components of this fabulous machine. Uh, it's almost 10,000 magnets, right? Yes, uh, in fact, the 27 kilometers are almost filled with magnets. Magnets that have uh, different uses. Different, uh, we use them, first of all, to um, um, make the particles bend and circulate in the circular trajectory. As those we can see the, here. Those are the dipoles we see here. In fact, the, the particles are kept into the uh, circular trajectory by the dipole magnet that produce a vertical field that bends the particle. And there are other uh, elements very important above all in the close to the experiments, which are the quadrupoles that focus the particle down to very, very small size. We are speaking about 12 micrometers inside the high luminosity experiments. And they, are, they collide, as you see in this uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful animation, giving a, a lot of pr fragments, a lot of uh, signals that the experiment then have to col collect and analyze later. Right. The reason why we are here is that b because there is no beam. And it's actually a special day today. It's the last day we can be here because it's the last day of the so-called technical, technical stop, stop, which yes. means nothing is circulating in the machine, no, right? Indeed. We couldn't be here if there were uh, particles circulating into into the machine, uh, so we, we, we are lucky that we can be here and just seeing a section of the, of the LHC. In fact, we are in a three months long uh, uh, break. Uh, Why do you break? Well, essentially to, well, to, to get relax, some relax for, for the operation team. Uh, that, that's, re that's really helpful for, uh, after a long year of operation but also to bring, uh, bring on with a lot of intervention, a lot of uh, um, maintenance uh, on, the, on the LHC, which will allow, will allow us to carry on for the rest of the year uh, without any major stop. Uh, so we, we do all the preventive maintenance that we, that we can. We, we profit for installing new components. You see in this video, for example, new component that's been installed in the SPS, uh, the injector uh, of the LHC, a new component which is for the future, the crab cavities, which have been developed right for the uh, future programs of, uh, of physics uh, with the LHC. And of course, the uh, technical stop is also used by the detectors here. We see the Atlas uh, detector. Yes, there are many activities carrying on, as I say, maintenance in, into, into the, the LHC tunnel, but as well in the detector, where they, they open the detector, they replace components that have been uh, damaged during the operation of the year. Uh, but it's, uh, it's really a vital part of the year, where essentially you do maintenance, but you do as well a part of the upgrade for the for the future uh, future operation. We profited as well to carry on with some activities that are foreseen for the upgrade, uh, really of, of the LHC, uh, let's see in the future upgrade, which will be, be uh, which will see its uh, fundamental uh, part in 2024, 20, 2025. But already uh, we took the occasion of the technical stop uh, this year to, to carry on with some... Uh, so some not only activities. maintain this machine that is incredibly complex, 27 kilometer of technologies that was developed basically here by, by you guys, but also improve because the purpose is always better, better and better. You mentioned the high luminosity LHC. Is it yes. another machine? What is it? No, essentially the high luminosity uh, upgrade foresees the, uh, the, the increase in the luminosity number of collisions for the LHC. We, we aim at increasing the number of collisions by a factor 10 in the future, so starting from 2026, 20, uh, essentially well, when all the upgrade will be, will be completed. Uh, 
uh, essentially what we will do, uh, we replace four kilometers of the LHC tunnel, um, installing new magnets close to the iLuminosity experiments, Atlas and, uh, and, and CMS. We aim at installing new, more powerful magnets that will allow to, to squeeze down, to reduce even, even further the size of the beam inside the, in the, the two experiments, and will allow increasing uh, really the number of collisions there, and um, will, uh, will allow collecting uh, even more, more data, more data, for, uh, for the, more, data uh, more collisions, discoveries. more discoveries, yes. exactly. So, um, I think at this point we can already start getting questions for you, uh, mostly focusing on the accelerator, its maintenance program, its uh, improvements in the future. What's next, actually, as well? Because today is the last day of technical stop, but then you start with BIM in a month or so, right? Yes, uh, yes. We'll, uh, we'll be starting already next week with, uh, uh, let's say, a campaign of, uh, of testing of all the components of the, of the LHC to, to check that everything uh, is working fine again. After injecting, finally, BIM at the beginning of April, we'll have again particles circulating into the LHC. So it's one month from uh, now till, uh, till the moment we'll inject again BIMs into the LHC. Yeah, because LHC. before that, you have to test all the components again. We have to again. test all the components above all the superconducting circuits, all the circuits, we have uh, see almost 1,600 circuits that we have to test one by one and check that everything is working fine. We have to test that all the protections are working correctly, so we'll, uh, we'll take this month, this month will be used uh, exactly for this purpose. And, now and I then have we'll to have a <laughs> few particles circulating and then we'll increase na progressively num the number of bunches till arrive at, uh, to the, to the speed of light. 24,000 bunches that <laughs> the speed of light, yeah, of course, but we'll arrive at the 20, 2,400 bunches that we've been collecting. Bunches of protons, year. yes. Bunches of protons, and, uh, and then we aim at increasing even more the luminosity with respect to what we Every Every year is different. Uh, every year brings new new discoveries, basically, at your level. Hopefully. Uh, new <laughs> we, we, we hope that the, the, the experiments are actually seen. There are small discoveries and big discoveries. The small discoveries are every day with this yes, machine, yes, right? Indeed. Okay, I have questions for you on the WhatsApp group that uh, has been created this morning with my colleagues from social media. So let's see if we can get the, the first questions for you, Mirko. Can you accelerate titanium in the LHC? Oh, we can almost accelerate everything. We've been accelerating apart protons. We've been accelerating um, lead ions in uh, in the past, and also last year uh, xenon uh, ions. But of course, the, the point is that the, the particles must be charged to be to be accelerated, to be bent uh, in the, in the in the in the magnet. So yes, well, everything that is charged in particle in, in, par in principle, we can accelerate. There's a, a question from Steve on Facebook. How do you make sure there is no one left in the tunnel when you start the accelerator again? That's yes. a good question. Yes, that's I a good want to make sure we're out question. of here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, of course, we pay a lot of attention for safety of people, not only for safety of the, of the equipment. We, we, we really love this machine and we don't want to damage any component of it. But we, 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 we pay a lot of attention to, to the personal safety. So before running the machine, we do what is called a patrol. Essentially, we check uh, visiting every point, every corner really of the, of the machine that nobody's left in, we, uh, we are forced to arm some boxes to, to, to prove that we have been there, we check that nobody's there, and if, if once the, this patrol is over, then we can inject beam and we are sure that nobody's left so in. So they're the both machine. human control and computer control, it's yes. controlled at all levels. Wendy, on Facebook, other than high luminosity LHC, are there any other big projects ahead? Wow, uh, if we want to speak about not really the, the, the medium term, but the long term future. Right, I think that's what she means. Yes, uh, we, we, have in, uh, we are projecting about, the, we are thinking about a new machine uh, which would be three times in circumference with respect to the LHC. Three and times, so 100 kilometers, 100 kilometers tunnel. Long ring. We uh, will get even more lost. <laughs> 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 Today, yes, to, to get to here, it's not been easy actually for me. <laughs> Well, uh, it will be essentially three times larger, so three times the energy of the LHC, and then uh, eventually replacing all the magnets of the LHC with more powerful magnets, we can think about increasing even further the energy, and we'll, uh, we, we hope we can reach a factor 10 with respect to the energy of the LHC. So this, so is, this the is the future, future circular, circular collider. collider. It's a FCC. project. Uh, it's not yet sure we're going to do it. It's in a feasibility state. It's in a feasibility And the decision study, will be taken people soon. People are already working hard to, to get it uh, disrealized, the start starting from, uh, well, after the, the operation of the LHC, let's say, so starting from 2030 uh, on. So okay, we have less than three way. minutes more with you, Mirko, now. Uh, Craig asks, what's the ratio of the speed of the accelerator compared to the speed of light? 
That's a good one for a physicist, right? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, uh, the pro protons that are accelerated into the FPS, which is the last uh, ring. Uh, ring before the LHC, we have a longer chain of, acceler of accelerators where the particles are accelerated before entering into the LHC. Uh, so, in the last ring, which is seven kilometers long, the FPS, the super proton synchrotron, the particles are already have already reached almost the, par the, the, the speed of light. Yeah. We have a 99.99999 times the speed of light. And what we do into the LHC is adding a bit more, but in reality, we don't care about the speed. We are also already close to the speed of light. We care mo more about the energy, and the energy increase into the LHC is a factor almost 14 with respect to what we get into, into the SPS. And above all, it's a factor 7 almost with respect to what the most powerful accelerator before the LHC, which was a Tevatron working in the United States, was produced until a uh, few years ago. So it's the closest average it's in history it's of this kind of machine. Ever, ever okay, this is uh, uh, a question from Agustin Barovero. Uh, what superpowers would you develop if someone was stuck inside the LHC while accelerating? This is uh, more a subject for uh, well, science this is, fiction. <laughs> this is science fiction indeed. As I said, we cannot have anybody trapped into the, into the machine. So it's an we experiment cannot. we won't do. <laughs> no, no, there are only two points actually in the, in the ring where you can be in with the, with the underground with the machine operating. But because there are uh, very uh, thick walls that are separating the area where people are allowed uh, to stay from, uh, from, the, from the tunnel. So uh, actually nobody, nobody is really close to the machine when it is operating. Of course, for several reasons, electrical problems, uh, let, uh, lack of, uh, of, of oxygen if there is a, if there is a helium leak uh, or even uh, radiation which is produced by colliding particles. But nevertheless, uh, we, we don't care once we are outside because we are very well protected by these uh, uh, thick walls of the, of, the, of the ring. So no risk for anybody outside. But of course, nobody is allowed to, to be in when we operate the machine. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mirko, for this uh, focusing on the Thank you. accelerator. You come back. Don't go away. You come back later for more okay. questions. It's now time to go to physics. Actually, that was also physics, but to physics analysis, data analysis. Welcome, Rebecca Gonzalez Suarez. <laughs> Uh, so, Rebecca, you are uh, not familiar in the tunnel. Usually you don't work here. Exactly, no. You are a member of the compact muon solenoid CMS experiment, mm -hmm. uh, which is a bit further than Alice. Yes. It's, uh, <laughs> that way is the closest that way. way. Yeah. That is the closest <laughs> way it's to go. Uh, so, and you work on data analysis. Mm -hmm. We were saying data come from the collisions. Mm -hmm. At the moment there are no beams, so no collisions for the last three months. Where are you on holidays for the last uh, three months? No, no, not at all. And in fact, we are in one of the most busy periods of the year because next week is one of the biggest conferences where we want to show results. So we are really working very much towards that, this Morion. But the work in the data analysis never really stops. I mean, from the collisions to the analysis, there is a very lengthy process. So you have to process the data, you have to correct it, you have to understand it very well. So it really takes time. So you. Right now, basically, the data that we are studying is the one of 2016. Ah, not even 2017. Not even 17. I mean, there are some groups that are doing it, but in general, we are finishing 2016 data two years ago, and just a few groups are really into 2017 data, so it really takes some time. And actually, beyond the LHC, we could still be analyzing the data because we have so much, and there are so many things to look for that is, is the possibilities are actually... Right, is it 40 million collisions per second yeah, in so four different points of yeah, the machine? So, so it, it means that <laughs> in the 2017 data, there could be discoveries oh, yeah, that you will find out about <laughs> only when you look at them, actually. Exactly, because I mean, 2016 data is not even half of all the data we have already in round two, and much less than the one that we are going to collect together with this year. So basically, there is much more data without being explored than the one that we are actually have explored. So we, for sure, there might be things that uh, we're going to be able to find. So it's going to be very exciting in the next years. What kind of physics are you studying right now? So I work in top quark physics. So I A particle that was discovered some time exactly, ago, right? Exactly, <laughs> at the Tevatron. But here we produce it so much that the LHC is actually known as a top factory. So yeah, we I have see. a lot of those. So it's, it's really exciting. And. Uh, can you reveal any of new results? I don't, I don't say discoveries, but any new results that you're going to present at the future conferences? Uh, I cannot reveal anything. But next week, for sure, there will be many new results from my experiments, from Atlas, from LHCV, from many other places. So you stay, stay tuned. And during the summer, we will have a big conference as well. So we have several checkpoints during the year where we can, we can check if we have found something new. 
And you're still studying the Higgs boson, right? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the Higgs boson was found here in 2012, but we're still far from completely understand it and characterize it. So it still may be a bit more exotic than we thought, and that could have a lot of implications in beyond the standard model physics, so it can be really cool. So lots of work to do for you physicists working <laughs> oh, yeah. on data analysis. <laughs> Uh, at CMS, you are more than 3,000 physicists. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been busy underground inside oh. the CMS cavern working. What was the major work carried out? Uh, yeah, well, actually, in every winter shutdown, of course, there is also a lot of work underground in the same way that there, are, there is work here in the LHC, there is work there in CMS that we are seeing. So in this image, we see CMS already open because people are using this time to do repairs, maintenance, and this kind of checkups in order to get the experiment ready for next year's data. So this year in CMS, we did different activities in the pixel detector, in the hadronic calorimeter, and we also did some several odds and ends that we do all the time. So depending on how long the shutdown is, we can do more or less things. So next year in the long shutdown, we're gonna really do major works. Uh, right. This is. Uh, tell us more about um, the works uh, that you foresee during the long shutdown. Uh, I think basically every soup detector is going to have different things done. So I mean, every sh every winter shutdown we use it for doing small upgrades and for testing things. So next year we really are expecting basically working all the soup detectors. Yeah. Now we're seeing um, your colleagues. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And this is uh, this what is you, you what you are aiming at: having exactly. cleaner, nicer, <laughs> and more abundant uh, collisions <laughs> yeah, yeah. in the middle of the detector. <laughs> so we have already questions uh, from our audience. Uh, let's start with uh, Bertolt. Mm -hmm. What experiments do you do with the antimatter created at CERN? Uh, well, actually, the CMS experiment where I work, in the same way as Atlas, we have antimatter because it's producing collisions all the time, but we right. are not really focusing in generating antimatter. However, there is an experiment at CERN that focuses specifically in antimatter. So you can check it out probably in, in, in the CERN. The website. LHCB experiment, right? Well, LHCB focuses on the balance between matter and antimatter. Yeah, you can tell us more about that. You're so this is uh, one of the main questions that are behind the building of the LHC, right? I mean, we wanted to find the Higgs, we wanted to study many other things, and one of the things we wanted to know more about was the balance and imbalance between matter and antimatter in the universe. Yeah. Because at the start in the Big Bang, it's supposed to have the same amount of matter and antimatter. And when you put matter and antimatter together, they annihilate in pure energy. So why are we made of matter? Why the matter didn't completely annihilate? So this is one of the questions that the LHCB people are studying. So also by, in CMS, by creating it, you study <laughs> it. And actually at CERN, there's the largest antimatter factory exactly. in the world, the, the AD, generated yeah, really by the AD. Cool. But it's probably <laughs> going to be the subject of another live we're ah, going to do. Be nice, yes. yes. <laughs> Kevin, if you could choose one thing you would like to be able to discover, what would it be? Uh, I wouldn't say. I mean, I don't want to be biased because I'm an experimental particle physicist, so I, I'm ready for anything. I, I hope we find many things, especially new particles, but I really don't have any favorites. So whatever is there, I, I will be happy so to So you want it. something new that is not even foreseen by theory. That yeah, would be really that a would dream. Be awesome. Yeah, that would right? be really cool. <laughs> Utpal Rohit, I hope I pronounced it right. <laughs> At what speed matter retains its form before turning into quantum energy. Oh, 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 well, this is beyond my field. I really cannot say, but I'm pretty sure that you can find the answer. Well, what somewhere. we could say is that protons are accelerated almost to the speed of light, and yes. they change nature at, the, at those do. speeds. Indeed, oh. I mean, they have to go to that speed close to the speed of light in order to actually come up something from the collisions. But right. They, yeah. They, they, are, they are more like a plasma when they collide. Exactly. It's no longer a proton it's in its usual no, it's form, so like when you extract it from the hydrogen exactly. at the beginning of the chain. So what collides in reality mostly at the LHC experiments are actually gluons that are inside the proton. So the proton is really dirty, messy, thin. It's not really like a point-like particle. So it has a lot of things inside. Yeah. Jeff Thomas, uh, interesting question. Is the data uploaded to a public net oh, and can live collision data be accessed by other physicists? So I think live collision data will be really hard because not even us, we use the full live collision data. I mean, we take the collision data, we filter it, and then we store it, and then we start processing it, but then we release our data, like every once in a while, and actually you can just Google it and you will find data for all the experiments of the LHC, and you can play with it. We also have like some different software that you can Master classes. On. Yeah, it's great. So if you are interested in playing with our data, it's out there already for you. So yes. On the cms.ch page, uh, uh, right? Yeah, for sure, from CMS you can <laughs> But also it. the other experiments. Yeah, Atlas has Atlas, it. Everybody has it. I mean, that is all open in here. What we do is always open. Actually, it's true. CERN is one of the very first places after the Second World War where everything was open and available for anybody, exactly. and it still is. And we are a sort of 
leading uh, figure in open data approach and, and open data philosophy. Yes. Right. Uh, that's why the World Wide Web was born here. Exactly. Actually. Uh, Juliet Gillespie on Instagram, what is the LSC doing now that we found Higgs, now that you found Higgs, you guys at CMS and Atlas? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, one thing is what we were already discussing before. We're trying to understand it better and see if it hides some kind of special behavior that we would not predict that can tell us a little bit more about things we don't yet know. So understanding more about this, exactly. this very special so this particle. Is, this is really one thing because actually before the LHC we couldn't ever study the Higgs. I mean, we can only study it here and that has a lot of possibilities for the understanding model models. Then we are also studying different other things like many new search scenarios like most notoriously supersymmetry where you have like per, per particle you have like a special super particle and that will give us a lot of different particles to study here but we're also looking for dark matter producing collisions we are looking for many different things and of course we're doing high precision measurements of a standard model properties that also are going to tell us a lot about the universe and in fact maybe the new physics hides in tiny deviations with respect to what we expect so there are really many things and we should mention dark matter. I know it's not your favorite, but uh, oh, we should say a few words about dark matter. <laughs> so if we were able to actually produce dark matter in collisions at the LHC and actually observe that, that would be completely great because then it would put together what we see in the events in the universe, in the macro scale, with, telescopes. with the micro one, and that right. will be great and will be completely revolutionary for the field. So it's very important that we carry on the dark matter searches in here, and even if we don't find them, because we might not be able to, still that is valuable information because we work in a different space than the guys that are looking at the universe. So it also gives valuable information. So it's really a very important part of the LHC right now. That's a nice one from uh, Gavin and Ian. Uh, they're wondering what advice you might give to students or people wanting to pursue a career in physics. You are ideal for that because you are not far away from your PhD. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> and, but you've done a whole career at CERN in all possible yeah, yeah. positions I, and contracts and oh, uh, yeah. fellowships. And, <laughs> so, so basically I studied physics and I think uh, studying physics is something that people shouldn't be scared of because it actually really opens many doors. So you can end up here at the LHC experiments or you can end up in many other places. In so industry. Exactly. There, it really is a very nice a choice when you are about to study. So for students, just consider studying physics and then just try to check who close to you is already working in the LHC experiments because there are many institutions all over the world. Exactly. And then there are many programs that CERN has for students at all the levels, especially summer students when they are like finishing the university, yeah. which is great. You can check that on jobs.cern and yeah. if you are a university student, you should find out a professor that. who teaches particle physics, you will exactly. end up here for sure. Yeah, in some way hard. or another. <laughs> Uh, from Shoruya Mukherjee, mm -hmm. any other upgrades planned for CMS during the High Luminous DLHC program after the installation of the pixel detector? This is someone who knows oh, yeah. a lot yeah, 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 about like. CMS. So, well, there are going to be many. For the High Lumi LHC, basically, we are going to just change CMS and make it like completely different. I mean, there are a lot of different changes. You can probably already check them out. We have some letters on it of intent that are public that you can go through. But, like, for example, we are going to open up our acceptance, we are going to be able to explore more forward areas. So there will be a lot of things happening, but it's going to be after run three. So this is really for longer term, but people are already working on that. So, Okay, uh, Siren Blackmore, what is the chance that something goes wrong and it creates a black hole? I think the chances are small, but <laughs> if a black hole is created, that will be awesome. I mean, it's not <laughs> going to be like an enormous black hole that is going to swallow the earth. It will be most likely like tiny one that will collapse immediately and we will only see it by the signs that it leaves after. So it will be actually really cool to create it here. We have four minutes to go. I'd like to call Mirko back here with us because there, there are going to be for sure questions about the accelerator. For instance, somebody is curious, Mercer, about the metal cases that we are all wearing uh, around our waist, except you. Ah, do you have yes, one? Yes, ah, it's I hidden. It, there it. it is. Okay, so we all have these um, bio cells they are yes. called. Uh, tell us why yes, are we wearing well, these? Yes, one of the risks being in a confined place uh, is the lack of oxygen. Uh, indeed, not only for the helium that is contained in the magnet, which is used actually to cool down the magnets, might be, might be a problem. But if the ventilation stops, it might be that at a certain point there is no more oxygen in a specific section of the tunnel where we are working. So in this case, there will be alarms informing us, and we must immediately open this, uh, this box 
uh, taking out the mask that will allow uh, walking out safely for a, well, there is an autonomy, an autonomy of 30 minutes, so normally it is, it is the, the time to, to go out from, uh, from any And point it's absolutely time. normal, we are under meter below ground, it's absolutely normal to yes. follow these but safety I want to, I want prescriptions. To on, I want to stress on the fact that it has never been used for a, for a, for a safety reason. Only for exercise. <laughs> <laughs> for exercise only, yes. We do exercise regularly to yeah, be able sure. to come down here. Okay, guys, I think we are uh, very close to the end of this uh, live on Facebook. Uh, BIM is starting soon, as we said, in a month or so. Uh, so this is the last chance to be here. We are very glad that you've been following with so many interesting questions. And we just say thank you, Rebecca, thank you for the CMS and Atlas as well, <laughs> physics. Uh, uh, physics presentations. And thank you, Mirko, for telling us thank about you. your job and the accelerator. And uh, bye-bye, everybody. Bye. See you soon on another live.